Okay, this is a quick uh, PowerPoint on pigments and binders. Um, and I just want to go over some of the different places where these things come from and how they're combined. So pigment is always going to be the color. So you're looking here in this basket, and this is all minerals and natural sources here, different types of rocks that are ground down in a mortar and pestle here, like a mocajete or a, a, a little um, hard, usually ceramic. Sometimes they're made out of marble or other stone and crushed, right? It's crushed, and you're going to see this um, kind of a condensed version of this in the Turner video because all those things uh, would be made by hand. They would go and get pigments perhaps that were um, pre-made or you know they'd have the powder but then they'd have to mix it with the binder by hand. You didn't buy paint uh, out of the tube in Turner's time. So the pigments are here and they're all these various colors and then we have to mix it with something because you can't just smear dry powder on your uh, surface. It, you know, you can use pastel chalk or you can use oil pastel, which is oil mixed in, but it's still chalky. But when you really want paint uh, to move around in a liquid form, you've got to add a lot more oil. So there's some different things you're looking at here. This is what it looks like in a tube. Here's the pigment oil mixed together, and then we buy it now in a tube. You can buy pigments and oils and mix them yourselves. Uh, yourselves, that, that does happen, but it's pretty rare anymore because it's time consuming, right? We're in the modern age, we don't want to spend time. There's also the egg yolk, and I talked about that with tempera, or I will talk about that depending on the order which you watch this video uh, on 2.2. Um, in chapter 2.2, but the egg yolk is a really good or um, uh, binder also. It's very sticky, and that is used in tempera paint, so oil paint. Whatever the um, medium is, it's going to say the binder first, oil paint, acrylic paint, tempera paint, fresco, that kind of thing. Fresco is different. The binder is not mixed in with the pigment. It's just pigment and water, if you, we'll call this water right here. It's just pigment and water, but it binds because of the lime in the plaster. So that's a unique situation. Oh, sorry, we had our palette knives up here. Okay, so these aren't the greatest photos, but this is from the Getty Museum in Los Angeles. Earth pigments, green earth, red ochre, yellow ochre. Um, these are found uh, in different places in the world. I don't exactly know where, but you will find these different colorants. And grind them down and then mix them with oil or acrylic or you know uh, watercolors as well we're going to get show gum arabic is how uh, watercolor and gouache are suspended uh, these are minerals malachite azurite and lapis now the way that earth versus mineral is broken down I, i'm not a mineral expert so i couldn't exactly tell you but minerals are a bit harder usually, and they're more like jewelry and things like that. So lapis lazuli um, is only found in a few places in the world, but the I wouldn't think a beautiful stone, you know, perhaps is used for jewelry, but to carve that out, you probably had to, you know, carve just this segment out here, and then the rest could be ground down. Different colors. Chemically produced um, pigments, a lot of times they start, with a actual mineral like this is copper verdigris so it might have been started with copper this is lead red and lead white no lead is a um something found in nature so it's it's possible that they you know some of them are pr from nature and then chemically processed but some of them are strictly chemically produced over here we have natural there's a natural segment over here brazil wood gives a nice color Indigo, blue, it gives a nice blue, not shown here. Saffron, <laughs> saffron, if you've seen saffron rice, it's fairly orange. So um, that's ground down as well as an expensive pigment and tumsil. Some pigments are expensive, don't get me wrong. Okay, so this view here is the larger view of that, um, that, that area in the Getty and this is showing binding medium a little bit uh, poor quality sorry but there's the egg yolk 
And this is gum arabic, okay? And this is gum ammoniac. And I it says from the stems of the um, parsley plant, Adam parsley plant. So I'm not as familiar with that. That has to do with gold leaf. Um, but for watercolor and for gouache, gum arabic is like this. But again, it's ground down. Water is added, and then it becomes looser. But you also have to have your pigment. Um, this is a refined clay with an adhesive. That's how gold leaf is stuck, but that's kind of a special case. Listing here of all the different um, different colors, like chrome yellow, lemon yellow, all the mineral salts. Okay, so a lot of these things, um, the pigments work in a variety of media or a variety of um, artistic pursuits. For instance, painting and drawing, this is kind of what we're focusing on right now, you can use colored pigments mixed with different, me different vehicles, different binders. You can also use it for uh, coating a sculpture. You can use it for like a, a uh, like we looked at uh, verdigris, you put that onto copper or bronze uh, and you finish that off for a sculpture. You can also use a lot of these for ceramic colorants and glazes. Um, you can use them for silk screening through those inks and colored inks in, in Asia. That's also very popular. Um, so it, it works in a lot of different ways. Also fabric dye can be used in, for a lot of these things. But some things cannot be, you know, are not universal. It just depends on the recipe. It depends on the temperature that it burns away, like for ceramic glaze. A lot of these things are not going to work. None of the insects and plant ones are going to work. They're going to burn off. Does that make sense? Um, I don't know why charcoal, charcoal is burned, uh, is a burned twig basically. Indigo and cochineal carmine, this color here, when we think of royal blue or royal purple, that's where it comes from, and it's the shell of a little sea snail, okay? Chemical pigments, those are, this is all industrial revolution here. That's the time frame for developing them. When you get into a medium or a vehicle, it's the liquid that holds the pigments together, and the binder is, is kind of what, um, sticks it together if that makes sense sometimes it just needs movement like okay for watercolor the binder is gum arabic the vehicle is water right sometimes uh it's one thing oil linseed oil is the vehicle or medium and binder for oil paint so it works as both sometimes there's an additional binder you know what i'm saying so for well, let's back up to watercolor is gum arabic pigment and you add water to it oil paint is just linseed oil and pigment so it just depends on the the way the materials applied it de depends on what the um the goal is all right so casein uh that comes from a cow linseed oil gum arabic gum arabic and chalk that is gouache Egg would be tempura. Matte medium is that clear stuff that you put on to um, uh, to coat a paint a painting sometimes, or if you're trying to do like some Mod Podge or something like that. Basically, Mod Podge and matte medium are real similar, uh, but that's clear acrylic paint, so that's just plastic. If that makes sense, beeswax can be another medium if we think of encaustic. And then if you think about what the binder is for fresco, I had this set up as a quiz, but that would be lime, okay? It's in the plaster. Supports for these different things. So oil paint, the best thing for oil paint is canvas. Tempera often is on wood. Fresco, can't put that on a canvas. Where are you going to put it? Where do you usually see it? It's usually on a wall. So there's some different questions there, so you can look through and get more familiar, but just remember that the pigment is the colorant. It's always the colorant. It's not anything else, and then the, the binder can be also the vehicle. Sometimes it isn't, though. So look at the ingredients when you're having a quiz question and um, get into some of these different colorants. Okay.